time to spotlight NVIDIA. We've gotten the earnings, a, a robust outlook in many ways. Dave Alta Villa is with us, president and principal analyst at Hot Tech Vision and Analysis. Thank you for being with us. Um, some of your thoughts and takeaways from the earnings report. Hey, Nicole, good to see you again. Happy Friday as well. Um, yeah, I mean, talk about a train that just you can't stop. NVIDIA continues its uh, AI data center domination with another blowout quarter, nearly doubling earnings on the quarter versus the same time last year, same quarter last year. Data center business was up 17 percent sequentially. Now it's over a 30 billion dollar per quarter business. It's up 112 percent in data center versus the same period last year. And it's driven by sales of uh, NVIDIA's Hopper and Blackwell GPU architectures. Uh, that's where the fuel is. Uh, data center build out uh, with hyperscalers like Microsoft Azure, AWS, Oracle, Google Cloud. That's going to continue for the next 18 to 24 months, I believe, as uh, demand for uh, AI compute um, in the data center is currently outstripping capacity. So I don't see any uh, signs of this NVIDIA train slowing anytime soon. <laughs> it, very interesting. And I had a guest yesterday who said $800 uh, by the year 2030. Very positive because of all the different things that NVIDIA brings that all the other chip makers don't have the ecosystem that NVIDIA has. And that's something you've focused on, right? Yeah, actually, you know, kind of the unsung hero uh, in a lot of these high tech companies like NVIDIA is their software engineering prowess. And that's really um, an enablement story to optimize um, and, and help developers, you know, get up to speed quickly with their platforms. The company is releasing uh, hundreds of what it calls NIMS or NVIDIA Inference Microservices for AI. These are uh, little AI boxes, if you will, that are optimized on NVIDIA hardware and allow developers to take advantage of industry platform AI models, but optimized for NVIDIA hardware and getting them up to speed quickly on that hardware so that they can, you know, go work their magic with it. And so really that is one of NVIDIA's uh, core strengths in addition to its obvious silicon prowess as well. Yeah, he was actually talking about its own language and how it has that as well and um, the, tw the digital twins and all the things that NVIDIA can do. So at um, $142, it hit 152 over the last uh, 24 hours, hit new highs. Where do you think this stock really could help head? Yeah, you know, I, I think... Um I mean, I'm a, I'm a technology analyst, not a, not a financial analyst, but I can tell you that um, I see a lot of upside still for this stock. Um, you know, if you talk about, you know, several hundred dollars, sure, I think that's a, a reasonable target. Um, there's other growth indicators here as well, though. And when you look at NVIDIA's, you know, for example, their automotive business, which is fledgling now at only about 450 million a quarter, I think. But they have an $11 billion design win pipeline with major automakers like Mercedes for their ADAS automated driver assist platforms. And so there's really lots of upside potential here in addition to the AI data center. Another thing that they're beginning to do now, uh, we're seeing some signs of um, market share um, gains in the CPU segment. So not just the GPU uh, accelerators that are great for AI, but CPU, they have a, uh, their Grace processor, which they bundle with, and in many cases integrate in design with their GPUs. It's going to begin to eat into Intel and AMD x86 market share on the CPU side in these AI data center builds build outs as well because they have such a tight coupling with with their GPU silicon. So again, lots of strengths, lots of areas for growth, continued growth in addition to obviously a, a burgeoning AI market that uh, shows no signs of stopping. And look, NVIDIA also, um, you had Jensen Wong talking about getting Blackwell out to more and more, even more so than he thought in the fourth quarter. And that demand has been incredible overall. So it certainly doesn't seem like there's a, a stop happening here in any way, shape or form. And with that being said, when you look at the group, is NVIDIA the leader, the star, the name you like, or what about the other names? 
You know, that's that's an interesting question. There are there are some very um, interesting players that are that are enjoying this AI boom beyond NVIDIA. Um, I think you have Qualcomm up on the screen right there, QCOM. Uh, that is a, an interesting stock for sure. They are what I would uh, refer to as an edge AI player. So endpoints uh, at consumers, uh, you know, whether it be a, a cell phone, whether it be uh, also uh, the automotive industry uh, in cars as well. They they have low power, uh, highly connected AI processors as well. Uh, Snapdragon is a big brand that's coming up in smartphones um, these days and also on the PC and Snapdragon PCs. Um, but other interesting players that are sort of riding uh, NVIDIA's coattails, if you will, uh, Micron, for example, is a memory player that we all know and well, a longtime uh, US chip manufacturer is providing HBM3E memory for NVIDIA as well. And so for, for their Hopper and for their Grace, uh, excuse me, their uh, uh, Blackwell GPU platform as well. And then you look at smaller players like SciTime, S-I-T-M. I like them as well. Interesting niche play here. Um, you're talking about clock timing chips for these high performance compute platforms and uh, they're actually on NVIDIA's Blackwell design in, in their boards. So you can look to these other fringe players to enjoy this ride with NVIDIA as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe some people were worried about the growth and sales slowing some, um, but overall you're not worried about that. I mean, the data center build out, if you talk to AWS, if you talk to the folks at Google Cloud, if you talk to Azure, uh, those people are, you know, they're all telling me, I'm, I'm hearing that, you know, demand is outstripping capacity. Um, you know, it's not just fear of missing out and, and being competitive with the latest AI technology. It's literally capacity. And before this AI boom, things were moving to the cloud. And so demand for compute in the cloud and then the data center is, is outstripping supply. Um, and I, I do not see an end for that anytime soon. I think eventually once we get, you know, the AI platforms fully deployed and fully realized in, you know, everyday life and it becomes more commonplace everywhere we go. Um, sure, I think you could see a leveling off, but 18 to 24 months maybe. I think um, that there's a longer term right rising for that. Okay, so still going for the AI boom. Um, thank you so much, Dave. Nice to chat with you. Dave you as well. Altavilla, thank you. Hot Tech Vision and Analysis. Thank you.